We all love a good ghost photograph, and although they are easily faked and most are quickly dismissed, every now and then a few very interesting and truly creepy photographs emerge that continue to confuse us and as of yet have not been confirmed as fakes. So here are five of some of the creepiest and hard to debunk ghost photographs of all time that leave us wondering, are paranormal beings walking among us? On November the 19th, 1995, the small town hall in the small English market town of Wem was burnt to the ground, leaving just a charred shell. As the locals gathered and watched in horror as the building burnt down, local photo enthusiast Tony O'Rahilly took a selection of photos of the blaze. When he developed the film a few months later, along with the images of fire and light, something more surprising showed up. In one of the photos, there was a young girl standing among the flames. O'Reilly, who had developed the film role himself, was quite disturbed by the image, so sent the photograph to the Association for the Scientific Study of Anomalous Phenomena. They concluded the negative was a straightforward piece of black and white work and showed no signs of having been tampered with. They said it was a random, ambiguous image forming the figure of a girl, probably caused by the way debris had fallen. Their explanation is certainly possible, but it was called into question by a program aired on the BBC called Out of This World, after their investigation, they thought the photo had been tampered with, which is something O'Rahilly strenuously denied, and the ASSAP was still convinced the photograph was genuine, but was just an illusion. Sadly, O'Rahilly passed away in 2005, and many of his friends believed the stress of the media attention surrounding his photo and basically being called a liar contributed to his death. But in 2010, something very strange emerged, it was a postcard showing a young girl wearing similar clothes to the believed girl in O'Reilly's photograph, standing in a street in Wem in 1922, over 70 years before the fire. Many were convinced that this was the image O'Reilly used to tamper with the photograph, but if you study it closely, although there are similarities, they are not exactly the same, and without O'Reilly being around to confirm or deny the claim, the photograph still remains a mystery. The locals of the town believe the girl in the fire photograph is Jane Cherm, a young girl who died in a fire that destroyed part of the town in 1677. She can apparently be seen wandering the streets, usually carrying a candle, and many believe it's her in the photograph. Whatever the explanation, the stories behind it are still unsolved, and the photo is definitely up there with the best and most debatable paranormal photographs ever taken. The Spectre of Newby Church some of you may have seen this next one floating around because it's a pretty famous photograph that was taken at Newby Church, which lies within the grounds of Newby Hall near Ribbon in North Yorkshire. The church dates back to 1870 and was originally built as a memorial to Patrick Vimer, a man who was captured for ransom by bandits and murdered before the ransom money could be paid, so his mother used the money to build a small church in his memory. As far as a haunted history though, the church actually has very little reports of paranormal activity, which for some strengthens the thought that the photograph is a genuine. It began when Reverend Lord was taking photographs in 1963, when he caught what became the most famous ghost photograph of its time. He took a picture of the altar and reported that nothing out of the ordinary was in the church at that time, but when processing the photograph, it appeared to show an invisible hooded figure staring at the camera. What's most terrifying is the figure seems to have a long face with two eye holes, sort of like the scream mask, and seems to be dressed in a long dark robe. The photo has been debated over the years, as many think it looks too staged, almost too good to be true, and a few skeptics have pointed out that the prayer cushions are not symmetrical. It's as if one had been moved to make way for the ghost. Despite this though, the picture has never been proved to be fake and has been analysed by many photo experts, including people from the BBC, and there is no evidence of a hoax or a double exposure. To this day, the 1963 Newby Church Believe Ghost is still one of the creepiest photographs out there and continues to leave us questioning whether or not a real ghost was captured that day. The Amateurville Ghost Boy Even if you don't know the history behind it, you have probably heard of the Amateurville House. It's located at 112 Ocean Avenue in Amateurville and was the inspiration behind the book and film versions of the Amateurville horror. It was where Ronald Defoe Jr. massacred his entire family in 1974, shooting his mother, father and four siblings. It's unclear why he killed them, but there are many theories and mysteries surrounding the case. 
This eerie photograph was taken inside the Amateurville house in 1976, just two years after the murders took place, and it appears to show a young boy with white eyes peeking out of a doorway. The exact details are unclear, but it was allegedly taken by professional photographer Gene Campbell, who was working with paranormal investigators in the house at the time, but the photo did not surface until 1979 when the Lutz family revealed it on a TV show. The Lutz family are the ones who lived in the house after the murders and only managed to stay for 28 days, claiming they were terrorised by paranormal beings and could no longer live there, and it was their experience that inspired the film. Many believe the photo shows the ghost of John Defoe, the nine-year-old brother Ronald Defoe brutally murdered, and others think it may just be one of the paranormal investigators in the house that night, with the white eyes being caused by the automatic infrared camera used to capture the image. Dozens of people have since tried to prove and disprove the Amateurville ghost boy, but to date there is no knowing whether it's real or not. So do you think the person in the photograph is a paranormal investigator, or is it the ghost of the little boy who was murdered in that house? The Bachelors Grove Cemetery Ghost Located near Midlothian in a remote section of Rubio Woods Forest Reserve in Chicago lies the Bachelors Grove, a largely almost forgotten cemetery that has an incredibly mysterious history. The land there was used as a burial ground in 1844, with the last burial taking place over a hundred years later in 1965, with the exception of Robert E. Shield, whose cremated remains were buried in his family plot in 1989. In its early years, the area had plenty of families visiting, tending to the graves and picnicking under the trees. But in the 1960s, all that changed when a nearby road leading to the cemetery was closed, basically restricting access and turning it into an eerie and very isolated place. Shortly after, it became a favourite place for vandals, and they slowly began to destroy the area, knocking down gravestones, spray painting everywhere and even opening up the graves, on more than one occasion, human bones were found scattered around the cemetery. It was around this time that unusual activity was reported, and since then there have been hundreds of reports of unexplained sights and sounds in the cemetery, and there is also evidence that the graveyard has been used as a place to perform black magic and occult rituals. But one of the creepiest paranormal photos in history was taken here by Jude Fells, who was part of the Ghost Research Society who were investigating the cemetery in 1991. Like on many paranormal visits, lots of photos were taken in the area that day, but it was one of Fowl's photos that caught what looks like a forlorn looking woman sat on a tombstone. She appears to be dressed in old fashioned white clothing and parts of her body seem to be transparent. Apart from the members of the ghost society, the graveyard was empty and none of them have a clue who this person could be. Although it's unlikely, she could have been a visitor who was sat there all the time and no one noticed, or maybe it really is an apparition of one of the poor souls buried in this cemetery who had their resting place disturbed by the vandalism of the graves. The Tulip Staircase Ghost On Sunday the 19th of June 1966, Canadian Reverend Ralph Hardy and his wife were visiting London and decided to visit the historical Queen's House section of the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich. They were particularly interested in the Grand Tulip Staircase so whilst they stood admiring this elegant spiral staircase from the foot of the stairs, Reverend Hardy took a photograph. When the couple returned to Canada and had their holiday photos developed, they noticed the tulip staircase appeared to have a strange figure walking up the stairs. Reverend Hardy confirmed that his wife was making sure the area was clear of other visitors, as they wanted to get a clear shot, so they can both confirm no one was present during the photo. Later that month, the Hardys visited the museum again and tried to replicate the shot with the help of the museum photographer. The Ghost Club also took an interest in the image, and after examining the photograph, they were satisfied that the picture was genuine and decided to investigate the area of the staircase further. On the 24th of June 1967, seven members of the club spent the night at Queen's house in the hope they could film the apparition for themselves and tried to make contact by holding a seance but unfortunately they produced no evidence of any paranormal activity. But years later in 2002, one of the gallery assistants working at the house had an unsettling experience, when he saw the apparition of a young woman moving across the balcony passing straight through a wall, and she was apparently dressed in white old fashioned style clothing. It's thought this could have been the ghost of a maid who was thrown from the highest banister and fell 50 feet to her death. So could this also be an explanation for the figure in Reverend Hardy's picture? 
While whatever the explanation, there is no denying that that is one creepy and eerie photograph. So that's five terrifying believed paranormal photographs. I hope you've enjoyed and I'm super excited for next week's video. I'm going to be doing another giveaway like my 100k subscriber special video. As always, thanks for watching and supporting and see you next week.